Next, we need to start integrating this into the native application. In Xcode, I created a storyboard for this new screen, and the view controller for this screen is our user profile view controller. I've already set up the user profile view controller to have appropriate button tap handlers, and also to have references to the email, first name, and last name text fields. Jump back over here to the simulator, you can see which fields I'm talking about. Now when the save button is tapped, and save button you can see in the blue text bottom right over here, what we need to do is take the information captured in this form, and we just need to turn it into an object. The first thing we're going to do is use NS Mutable Dictionary to create the object that contains the data that we're going to send to the server. And now let's start assigning values to that. We'll use the dictionary's set value for key function to set email address, first name, and last name values as attributes of this object. Next, we'll need to create a Worklink Procedure Invocation Data instance to specify the adapter, the procedure name, and the parameters that are going to be sent to the Worklink server. So we'll use Worklink Procedure Invocation Data, and we'll just call this Invocation Data. And we'll initialize this instance with init with adapter name. And the adapter name is the name that we specified from the command line. So we'll call it cloudint adapter. And the procedure name is the name of the method, which is put data. So we'll specify put data. Now that we have the invocation data instance, we need to set the parameters on that. So we'll invocation data dot parameters, which is expected to be an array. So we'll create an array instance, and inside of that array, we're going to put the user profile object. Now that we've created the invocation data instance, we've set the parameters, all that we have to do is send this to the Worklight server. So we'll use Worklight client, we'll use the shared instance, and use the invoke procedure method to invoke the remote method on the data adapter. We just need to specify the invocation data, and then specify the delegate. And the delegate is again going to be an instance of Worklight delegate which I've already implemented in this class. So we just need to specify self. Now let's scroll down and enable the methods that I've already created for the Worklight Delegate protocol. Before we invoke the procedure, let's go ahead and add a logging statement so that from the debug console, we can monitor and make sure that this function is actually being invoked. So let's save this file. We'll stop the simulator and let's relaunch it now that we have our call to the Worklight server Im implemented. So our application is loaded. We can go to our user profile screen, and we'll enter our first name, our last name, and our email address. In a production implementation, you'd also want to make sure you have some error checking in here. I just have a very basic save function. I'm not doing any error checking. But be advised that in a real world situation, you want to make sure that you have error checking. You probably also want to make sure that you have a JSON store, and you're, you're storing this locally before you send it off to the server. So we'll hit save. We can see here in the console, sending data to server, and we can see we've got the success message. So the success callback has been invoked. Now let's jump back to the browser, and we can look at our Cloudant database. We will refresh this screen, and you can see we've now got a piece of data in here. And you can see the last name is Trice, first name is Andrew, and the email address is amtrice at us.ibm.com. It was that easy to tie into an existing data store using Worklight. We just had to create the data adapter, expose the functionality from the Worklight server, and then update the native client to push data to Worklight, which sends it to the backend data store. And again, because this is done through Worklight, if we wanted to turn this off, we can disable access. We can also look at the analytics. So I could look at the analytics for our data adapters. You can see we've got six calls to this adapter. We can see the number of calls per user. We can see that, hey, all of them happened today. We can also see which applications are calling it, which procedures are being invoked. And if there are any errors, you'd be able to see them in the client logs. This has been just a quick overview of integrating Worklight into an existing native mobile application for iOS. You could also use Worklight to easily manage your push notifications. Add data adapters for easily adding data services to your application. And you can also use Worklight to manage security. This would be your login, authentication. It could be a secure data store. On top of all this, you could seamlessly integrate with Worklight QA, which adds application scanning. And you could also integrate with Tea Leaf, 
which gives you the ability to add in-depth analytics into what your application is doing so you can see which features are people using, how are they using them, how can I make my application better. If you'd like to learn more, be sure to check out the learning resources for Worklight. Thanks.